Welcome everyone. I am Evangelist Rebecca Novo. It's time to talk about preparing for the coming of all. Our Lord Jesus Christ is about to come back. Just like he said he was going to prepare mansions for us. Then he'll come back and get with us and then we'll go with him back to heaven to be partakers of the marriage feast that has been prepared for us in heaven. It is about to happen. We are living in the noble age. The Lord is coming back very soon, sooner than expected. So we've got to live knowing that we are living at the end of the age. Any time the trumpets will be sounded. But it is only those that will hear the sound of the trumpets that will be able to go with him. Jesus is ready for, to come back. He has done all he wanted to do in heaven. He has prepared everything. Everything is ready in heaven. Thousands of saints will come back with him on that day. And they already know who will be coming back with him on that day. They know the horses that they will be riding on. And they know their positions. Who will go first, who will go second, who will go last. Who will do whatever on that day. They already know they will be raised. And they are ready because they know there is, we are living at the end of the age. And the Bible says, seven, trumpets, seven angels will sound trumpets on that day. So the seven angels that will sound the trumpets, they are ready. Michael himself is ready for the battle on that day. And the Bible says, the problem is here on earth we are not ready for the coming of the Lord. We haven't prepared ourselves. We don't know what's up, what is about to happen. Some of us we know, but we think there's time. We used to say it's quarter to, mid to 12, 12 being the time of the, the events will happen. But now it's no longer quarter to. It's less than a minute to. Our Lord Jesus Christ is about to come back. Any moment, any time, any day soon, is he come, he's coming back. Just like he said he was going to come back. And now he's ready to come back. All the mansions have been prepared. Places have been prepared for us in heaven. But are we ready to go and take our places in heaven? Have we done what it takes for us to be able to go with him on that day? It is time to change our ways. Repent in any way we've gone astray. And go back to him and ask him to forgive us. So that on that day we'll be able to go with him when he comes. Or in case he tarries and we die before he comes, we'll be able to go to heaven. But if we are not prepared, our hearts are not ready, we cannot enter heaven on that day, we cannot go with him on that day. Why? Because of the things that we have done wrong, where we have gone astray. It's for, it is fortunate that we have got the time we have got now, we can repent and go back to him and he, he, he will hear us and forgive us. It doesn't matter what you did. If you go to the Bible, like I've been talking about, going to the Bible and seeing what the Bible says we should not do, and then you should not do it. If you go to the Bible and see that you did what the Bible says you should not do, there's time now to repent. Go down on your knees and say, Lord, I know I did this. He knows you did it already. But tell him with your own mouth, I know I did this. But your word says, according to this verse, says I should not do it. But I've done it. He had mess upon me, he will forgive you. It doesn't matter what you did, even if you killed a person. If you go back to him and say, Lord, it mess upon me, I killed a person. Forgive me, you forgive you. The time we've got now is time for us to go to him and ask for forgiveness and repent and he'll forgive us. It doesn't matter what you did, even if you killed 100 people. It doesn't matter what you did. If you have been on drugs or you have been a, a robber or you have been an armed robber, it doesn't matter what you have been doing. Only what you need to do now is go back to him and repent and don't do it again. Ask him to forgive you, but don't go back to your vomit. Once you have asked him to forgive you, he will forgive you, but don't go back, go, don't go back to it and do it again. It doesn't matter what you committed, whether you've been lying all day or you've been biting, stealing, killing, it doesn't matter what you have been doing. Just go back to him and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you. Go back to him with a repentant heart and he will forgive you. But if you do it again after you have repented and he has forgiven you, and then you go back and do it again and, they, and then say, I'll ask him to forgive me again, he'll forgive me again, he will not. But all those things that you did without knowing, sins that we committed without knowing, if we go back to him and repent and ask him to forgive us, he will forgive us. He is a forgiving father. It doesn't matter what you did. It's never too late to, to ask him to forgive you. It's never too late to repent. Go down on your knees now. You know what you did. Only you know where you went astray. Unless you ask him to forgive you, on that day you will not be able to enter heaven. Or you will not be able to go with him. But if you ask him now, you don't need to let the world know what you did. Just go back down on your knees. Between you and him, ask him to forgive you. Repent from the bottom of your heart and he will forgive you. And then on that day, you will be able to go with him. 
Or if you die before he comes, you'll be able to enter heaven. There are so many things that we do unknowingly that will that cause us to be unable to enter heaven. At times we look at them and say, we think it's so minor. We think it doesn't matter. And so we do it anyhow. But it is unfortunate that some of the things that we do or most of the things that we do will cause us to be unable to enter heaven. And most of the times we look at, at such things and we think, we think ah, this is minor, it is so small, it doesn't matter. But before God, it matters. Before God, it is all about the heart. If your heart is filled with filthiness, filthiness all those things that are not of good are in your heart. You go to the Bible and check, the, you see so many things like Romans 1, 28, 27 to 29, or Galatians 5, 19 to 21, so many areas, 2 Timothy 1, 3, 1 to 5, so many areas in the Bible you see those things that we do that are not right before God. If we have done such things, we have got to repent and ask him to forgive us and prepare our hearts, get such things out of our hearts. This is why I'm looking at some of those things one by one. Because most of them, we see them and we think it's minor, it doesn't matter. And today I want to talk about stubbornness. Because most of us, we think stubbornness is, is nothing, it's minor. We think we are just being stubborn, it doesn't matter. Even arrogant, we think we're just being arrogant. We're just being rude, end of story. We don't know that, that arrogance, that rudeness, that stubbornness will cause us to be unable to enter heaven or to be unable to go with Jesus because he is not looking for people who are filled, who, who are full of stubbornness in their heart. I've gone through the Bible. I haven't seen where it says it's okay to be stubborn or where it says go out there and be stubborn. Or even when Jesus came and gave, told his disciples to go and preach and he sent them two by two, he did not say go and be stubborn out there, go and teach them to be stubborn. No, he said go and teach them about the kingdom. Stubbornness is not of God. Don't look at it and think it is minor. If you have been stubborn, it is time to go down on your knees and ask the Lord to take it away from you and repent and say, oh Lord, I'm not going to be stubborn again. I don't want to be stubborn again. In any way, I've been stubborn. Lord, take this stubbornness away from me. I don't want uh, stubbornness to stop me from going to heaven or to be unable, to cause me to be unable to go with you on that day, Lord Jesus, simply because of stubbornness. After all, you don't get anything from stubbornness. But you lose all. My Lord, because of stubbornness. It doesn't matter what you have been doing. Maybe you have been giving to the poor. Magneros, you gave your life to Jesus, you serve in church, you give tithe, you give offerings. If they say seed, you give the seeds in the church. Anything good you have been doing, you go out, you evangelize, you do everything else that is right before the Lord. Your name is written in all those books. Magneros are in heaven. But your name is not in the book of life simply because of stubbornness. Because there's no way you can be stubborn and then expect to enter heaven. No way. There's no one in heaven that is stubborn. So we've got to run away from stubbornness. And there's no way in the Bible where it says we should be stubborn. Or stubborn is good. Or teach them to be stubborn. Or where it gives us principles of being stubborn. But anywhere we check in the Bible, the Bible speaks against stubbornness. Like in 1 Samuel 15, 20. 23, the Bible says, Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft, and stubbornness as bad as worshipping idol. So the Bible is telling us that stubbornness is very bad. Therefore, if the Bible says stubbornness is very bad, how, then, how come you, you are stubborn? You teach others to be stubborn, and you expect to enter heaven or to go with the Lord on that day. That means, uh, when you are teaching them to be stubborn, all you are doing is uh, you are just teaching them to, you are just showing them the way to go to hell. Because, uh, stubbornness is the quickest way to go to hell. Don't teach others to be stubborn there, out there. But uh, fight by all means to run away from stubborn, stubbornness. Do what you can not to be stubborn. Refuse to be one of those people that are known to be stubborn. Maybe people don't know that you are stubborn, but you know it in your heart that you are stubborn. It is time to repent. Go back to the Lord and ask him to take away that stubbornness from you. And say, Lord, I don't want to be stubborn anymore. 
uh, what you get from being stubborn. If you gain anything, I want to know what you have gained from, from being stubborn. All I know is you have already lost to heaven because of being stubborn. Because there's no way you can enter heaven as long as you are stubborn. No way. Heaven is not for you. And I go, in heaven, they love each other. They are not stubborn to each other. So how come you think you can enter heaven when you are stubborn? There's no way. It is time to change our ways and go back to the Lord and ask him to remove that stubbornness from our hearts and repent and ask him to forgive us in any way of being stubborn. Maybe we did not know that stubbornness takes heaven from us, but now that we know, we have got to change and say no to stubbornness because it is very bad according to the Bible. The Bible, the Bible tells us as well, in Deuteronomy 9, 13 to 14, it says, The Lord also said to me, I have seen how stubborn and rebellious these people are. Leave me alone, so I, am, I may destroy them and, and erase them, erase their name from, from under heaven. Then I will make a a mighty nation of your descendants, a nation larger and more powerful than they are. So God told Moses that he was he wanted to destroy Israel from under the, under heaven. He wanted to destroy the whole nation, the people that he had taken from Egypt. But when he realized that they were stubborn, he now wanted to destroy them. He wanted to destroy everyone. That I call that, simply because of stubbornness, God was ready to destroy them. We still face the same destruction that God spoke about to Moses when he wanted to, to destroy the, the children of Israel because of stubbornness. We still face that same destruction. We might not be destroyed now. When we are here on earth, we live at the number of our days and the number of our years. But on the day we die, we will face that destruction by going to hell. Why? Because of stubbornness. So stubbornness does not build us, it doesn't add anything to us, it destroys us, it takes us to hell. Once you enter hell, you are destroyed. But once you go to heaven, you, you, you have got life to live. So whenever the Bible talks about you being, you being destroyed or you being killed, it means you, you go to hell. Not now, but on the day you die, you go to hell. On the day the Lord comes, you're not able to enter with him, to go with him. Why? Because of stubbornness. This stubbornness of yours that is in your heart, that you even teach others, will, will finish you, will destroy you, will take your life from you. When you go to hell and burn in the lake of fire, that is not none ending. None is stop burning and burning and burning and burning forever. Simply because you were stubborn. You were even teaching others to be stubborn. And what did you get from that stubbornness? Or what did you gain when you told them to be stubborn? Nothing. Rabbi Akosa. It is better to teach others to, to love one another than to teach others to be stubborn. Yet the stubbornness takes them and you yourself to hell. And it, it will be unfortunate for you because you, on that day you face judgment for your own stubbornness and judgment for the stubbornness of others that you taught to be stubborn. Stubbornness is not of God, it is of the devil, it is very bad, it destroys our lives by sending us to hell. So why should we be stubborn? If we get nothing from it, I'd rather replace where the stubbornness with love, because love will take me to heaven. If I don't want to enter hell, then I have to run away from stubbornness. Why? Because it is of the devil, it's not of God. It destroys people's lives. The bronze. The Bible tells us in Nehemiah 9.16. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 9.16 says, But our ancestors were proud and stubborn, and they paid no attention to your commands. They refused to obey and did not remember the miracles you have done for them, this one is 17. Instead, they became hard. Instead, they became stubborn and appointed a leader to take them to back to, 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 their, to their slavery in Egypt. But you are, a, you are in a God of forgiveness, gracious and merciful. 
slow to become angry and rich in unfailing love. And because God wants us to do or what he told us to do, even if he, he will have told us to do certain things, but because we are stubborn, we cannot just do what he said we should do. We find our own thing to do. Or maybe he says, appoint this one to do this and this to clean the sanctuary. Because of stubbornness, we say, no, this one cannot clean the sanctuary. Let's choose that one instead. Simply because of stubbornness. Maybe you don't know, you did not know that it is because of stubbornness. That you go opposite to whatever the word says you should do. Or you go opposite to whatever the Lord says you should do. Even if he spoke to you and says, do this, but you refuse and you do your own thing. Why? Because of stubbornness. Then at the end, you think you go to heaven when you die. But you, you oppose the Lord every day. Anything he says, do, you refuse. Someone might come to you and say, I had a dream, this and this and this. You say, no. You are always refusing, opposing the word of the Lord. Fighting against the Lord. Why? Because of stubbornness. You cannot just follow what he says, do. Why? Because of the stubbornness. So you have got to ask the Lord to, to forgive you in any way you have been stubborn. And take away that stubbornness from you. So that on that day you will be able to go with him. Or if you die, you will be able to enter heaven. There is no way you can go to heaven when you are stubborn. And then go, go to heaven and start to be stubborn and start to oppose everyone in heaven. And start to fight against everyone in heaven because of your stubbornness. Yet in heaven they don't fight each other. They are not stubborn. They love each other, you say. But because you are not used to loving, loving others, you are used to fighting because of the stubbornness in you. How can you then enter heaven where there is peace, where they don't fight against each other, where they don't oppose each other? There is no way you can enter heaven with stubbornness. If, you have, if heaven is your target, then you have got to run away from stubbornness. Repent, go down on your knees and ask the Lord to forgive you and take away that stubbornness from you and he will. But once he take his, takes it from you, don't go back to it again. Change your ways. There's no time. The time is limited. The time is short. But the time to change our ways is now. The time to say no to the devil in any way he has been causing us to be stubborn is now. The time to ask the Lord to forgive us is now before the sins are taken from us. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. 21. Deuteronomy 21, 18 to 21 says, Suppose a man is a stubborn and rebellious son who did not, who will not obey his father or mother, even though they are even though they discipline him. In such a case, the father and mother must take the son to the elders as they hold court at the, at the town gate. The parents may say to the elders, this son, is, this son of ours is stubborn and rebellious and refuses to obey. To, and refuses to obey. He is a, a glutton and drunkard. And a drunkard. Then all the men of, of his town must stone him to death. In this way, you purge this evil from among you and all Israel who, who hear who hear about it and be afraid. So the Bible tell the Lord was telling Moses to tell the children of Israel that if parents have got a child, a son that is rebellious and stubborn, that child should be stoned to death. But the Bible says, this simply means hell. If you are rebellious and you are stubborn, you will not be stoned to death now. But on the day you die, that's when they will stone you to death by sending, sending you to hell. So if you are stubborn, you will not be killed now. But you wait for the day you die. That's when you will be killed by going to hell. The moment you are sent to hell, there is no life for you. That means death. That means you have been killed. But the Bible says, if there is life for you, you be you be sent to heaven. So why should we do what causes us to be killed? What has got a death, death sentence upon us? The, the death sentence of taking us to hell. Because once we go to hell, we are dead. 
because you'll be in fire forever, burning forever. The Bible says, so we've got to run away from what will take us to hell, what, what kills us. The Bible says, and do what will give us life, what will take us to heaven, love each other, run away from stubbornness, rebellion. The Bible says, it doesn't give us life, it gives us hell. The reward for being stubborn is hell. You might think I'm just being uh, stubborn. It doesn't matter. But before God, it matters. And every time you are stubborn, a book is ticked that you are stubborn. Yeah, every time you are rebellious, the book, your name is ticked that you are being rebellious. As a result of those ticks in the book of stubbornness and rebellion, your name cannot enter the book of life. The moment your name is not in the book of life because of stubbornness, you cannot enter heaven. It doesn't matter what you have done here on earth. The moment you are stubborn, and it is recorded and written down that you are stubborn, and they, they will show you a video of yourself being stubborn, whether it was at work or whether it was on the road, whatever it did, I don't know where it was, where you were being stubborn. They will show you a video of yourself being stubborn, and because of that stubbornness, you cannot enter hell. The Bible says, even if you gave your life, your body to be burned, but because of stubbornness, you cannot enter heaven. The Bible says, Stubbornness is not of God, it is of the devil. We have got to run away from it. 2 Kings 17, 14 to 15 says, But the Israelites who do not listen, they were as stubborn as their ancestors, who had refused to believe in the Lord their God. They, they worshipped and they, they rejected his decrees. And the covenant he had, he had made with their ancestors, and they despised all his warnings. They worshipped worthless idols, so they became worthless themselves. They followed the example of the nations around them, disobeying the Lord's command, command not to imitate them. So the Lord commanded the Israelites not to imitate the nations around them. The nations in the promised land where they had gone to. But because of stubbornness, the children of Israel did not listen to what the Lord had told them. They could not keep the commandments of the Lord because of stubbornness. You, I don't know what you do. You know what the Bible says you should not do. You know the commandments. Whenever you find yourself being unable to keep the commandments, know that you are stubborn. And this failure to keep the commandments will take you to hell. Being unable to keep the commandments will take you to hell. Just like the children of Israel, who could not keep the commandments of the Lord because of stubbornness, and they went to hell. The Bible says, most of them, they even died on the way to the promised land. Why? Because of stubbornness. Because they decided to go back to Egypt because of stubbornness. They could not keep the commandments of the Lord. There is no way you cannot be unable, you can be, you can fail to keep the commandments of the Lord and expect to enter heaven. It doesn't work out like that. If you want to enter heaven, then you've got to keep the commandments of the Lord. The Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles 30, verse 8 says, Do not be stubborn as they were, but submit yourselves to the Lord. Come to his temple, which he has set apart as holy forever. Worship the Lord your God so that his fierce anger will, will, will turn away from you. If you want him to turn away his fierce anger from you, obey his commandments. Don't be stubborn. Do what the word says you should do. Run away from what the word says you should run away from. Obey the Lord. Keep his commandments. Because without that, you cannot enter heaven. It is time to change our way. It is time to go back to the Lord and do what is right before him. And run away from stubbornness. Because stubbornness causes us to be unable to keep the commandments of the Lord. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 31, 27 says, For I know how rebellious and stubborn you are. Even now, when I'm still alive and am here with you, you have rebelled against the Lord. How much more rebellious will you be after my death? This was Moses. He was worried that these people that are being rebellious now, when he was still there with them, what more when he, when he was gone? What were they going to do? 
they were going to be rebellious even more. And therefore Moses was worried because he knew that the moment you be gone, they would become very rebellious. We should not be rebellious. Osea 4.16 says, Israel is stubborn, like a stubborn heifer. So should be, so should the Lord feed her, like a lamb in a, in a lush pasture. No. You cannot expect blessings from, from the Lord when you are rebellious. If you want blessings from the Lord, you should not be rebellious. You have got to run away from rebellion and stubbornness. Stubbornness is not of God. It doesn't cause God to bless us. It causes God to, to, to withheld blessings from us simply because of stubbornness. Deuteronomy 10, 16 says, Therefore, change your, your hearts and stop being stubborn. So we've got to stop being stubborn. As we can hear, as we can see clearly, the Bible is saying, stop being stubborn. But we are stubborn. We have got to stop being stubborn. Because stubbornness is not of God. It is of the devil. It will not take us to heaven. It will take us to hell. So we've got to change. We should not be stubborn at all. Proverbs 28, 14 says, Proverbs 28, 14 says, as, as a dog's wings, or 28, Proverbs 28, 14 says, Blessed are those who fear to do wrong, but the stubborn are headed for serious trouble. The stubborn are headed for hell. Blessed are those that keep the commandments of the Lord and do what is right before him. The stubborn are headed for hell. Thank you so much for watching.